and guess what? It's another stick shift. <laughs> I didn't read my memos close enough. I'm getting my stick shift lesson today, boy. I'm right behind a guy. He's car hauled him to get into his money. 475 miles driven today. And my 6.0 power stroke. You hear me? What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the process. So, um, today is Monday morning, September 25th. And I'm getting ready to go out and start my, my process, I guess you could say. I'm gonna go make my second pickup for a three pickup load I'm uh, scheduled for this morning. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna bring y'all into my world. I'm not sure what I described this video, what the title is, but basically my goal is to make close to $1,000 today, or at least within 24 hours of today. So, uh, what I did was I picked up, I booked three cars on Friday, which was a couple days ago. And I picked up one because it was real close to home. So I picked that one up, I let it sit over the weekend. And I got two more pickups to go make. One about 30 miles away from me now. And then the next one would be about 20 miles from that one. So. Again, my goal is to make as much as I can today. These are going 170 miles to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Basically, this says Greenville, Michigan. This one is Cedar Springs, Michigan. And the other one I think is Fremont. Fremont, Michigan, but they're all basically the Grand Rapids area. So, um, now if I show y'all what I'm gonna be paid for this, I need y'all to make sure y'all like this video. I'm finna bring y'all into my world and I don't usually always show my business, but I need to get a like for this video for me letting y'all in. I wanna discuss everything, be transparent about how this works because I am a new authority and I've been getting a bunch of questions on my last couple of videos about how my dispatching, you know, about me being a new authority and things of that nature. How's everything going? Starting out, you know, fresh, brand new. So I'm gonna to touch on a few different subjects today. I'm going to show y'all how I dispatch what I'm using because I'm using Super Dispatch. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to break down this app a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm pretty much doing Michigan to Michigan loads. I'm trying to stay local, regional. So I got me a load search saved. Hopefully y'all can see that. So this morning we only got 17 loads. I am not a registered carrier with all these shippers on here pretty much every day I am registered with this one here this is back lot cars but pretty much every day when I see a new shipper I'll uh, either call their dispatch when you click on their their load posting it shows you all the information you will see uh, their email whether they're based out of their phone number so I either send them an email or I'll call them and I'll just say, you know, I want to be a, a carrier for your company. What do you need from me? What are your requirements? A lot of them been telling me they need, they need me to at least have three months under my authority. Some say six months. So it's kind of been a three to six months range, which is crazy to me because I'm like, well, how do y'all expect me to make money if I can't even book a job? But they want you to, I guess... <laughs> pay your insurance for three months without getting no without making no money and then come back and apply for jobs with them it's the weirdest thing man but one thing i would really say you better make sure you got you a i like to say a bag but make sure you got you some money saved up to keep you afloat your first few months in service with a new authority because it's not a guarantee you're gonna actually be able to find the work the way you need to like i've been blessed i got in with a couple of shippers and they're keeping me busy. Like I'm always getting loads from my area going somewhere, but it's kind of been hard to find loads coming back to my, uh, coming back home, I should say. So, but again, I'm going to go into a little more depth and show y'all that this dispatching service, 
how I book my jobs, the way I kind of, you can put a bid in on what you want to be paid for that job. And I'll show you all that later on. We'll get into that later on. But I want to make my first pickup on time. It's at, the dealer opens at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. It's already 8.09. I just walked around and did my pre-trip inspection. I'm going to do one quick last walk around. Again, this is Profit Transport Logistics. Make sure y'all subscribe to my channel. I'm all about showing y'all the process. Hopefully, you follow me on my Instagram and TikTok. Because I pretty much showed the whole process from start to finish with starting my own transport company. From when I first brought the trailer, when I got my truck, getting everything set up on the truck, did repairs on my trailer. I've been showing every single step. And I'm going to continue showing the step as I learn and as I grow with my own authority. So this is the truck I got Friday. I picked up a Jeep Liberty. Um, I don't think I showed y'all the, the payout, but basically each one of these loads are 250. I'm being paid 250 per car to go to Grand Rapids. It's about 170 miles one way. So, not bad do the math um but you tell me wherever you guys are from whatever states you guys are in what's the normal payout usually for a 170 mile trip is 250 a pretty good rate because so i noticed that a lot of these shippers try to, to try to lowball you they suggest what they want to pay you and you can go in and put a bid in say i wanted more than 250 so i wanted to do it for 300 i could have did that but sometimes they come back and say, nope, 250. <laughs> or they may say 255. They try to lowball you. And you ain't got to accept that job if you don't want to. But if that's enough for you, then take it. I understand why these rates are so low because guys are just picking these scraps up. I get it. But I don't want to say too much. I'm going to go ahead and make my first appointment. And I'll come back on and talk a little bit more as we go through this day. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm at a Subaru. Actually, this is a Toyota dealership. I just picked up a Subaru. And now I'm finna get ready to shift my load. Gotta move this first car that I had loaded forward on my trailer and put that Subaru right where this one is right now. And I'm gonna try to get y'all some footage as I do this. Funny thing, was this Subaru was a stick shift. I didn't read that part in the memo, but luckily I can drive a stick shift. But that's one thing to keep in mind when you wanna haul cars, you gotta know how to drive a stick shift, which you should if you have a CDL. They train you to drive a stick shift in school, so you should be good. But let me go ahead and get these cars shifted so I can get to my next pickup.
Okay, so I got them shifted and this stick shift loaded. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I had to stop recording because uh, driving a stick shift is one thing, but driving one up a ramp, up a trailer, I should say, it's a whole different ball game. Kind of gave me a little bit of a test, but it's loaded. So I'm working on my uh, strap down time and my on location time. I'm trying to keep it to a minimum you don't want to be at a dealership for longer than you have to be like i'm kind of at 30 minutes to 45 minutes for picking up my loads and i want to kind of shave that about at least 10 or 15 minutes so i can have more drive time on the road and get to my business but let me go ahead and get to my next stop catch y'all back on in a minute all right so i'm at my last pickup my third pickup i'm in at ann arbor michigan at the auto mall it's like dealerships all everywhere in this little circle it's kind of a tight squeeze pulling in but uh i parked on the street he told me i could have came in a lot but uh to me it's a little too tight i don't want to take no chances making no turns close to no cars so i parked on the street i think i see it over here it's kind of pulled in tight it's this old Nissan Frontier pickup truck. I don't know how I'm supposed to get out of here. <laughs> I think they left one spot open. <laughs> one parking spot's open. And I gotta back this out. Alrighty, so I'm gonna try to do this quickly. I'm gonna show y'all my whole inspection process. So the first thing I got to do is find the, the VIN number. Most cars have a little tag like this. And the VIN number, this should be the VIN number right here. Yep, one in. So I take my other phone. And hopefully I can see that. I'm just gonna press on scan VIN for pickup inspection. Come down here and take a picture of it. Hope it reads it so I ain't gotta type it in manually. It's kinda weird. So you see it says rescan, so it didn't do it. I might have to put this one in manually, looks like. So let me do that and I'll cut y'all right back on. Okay, so now I got it in manually. What I normally do is uh, I pull the car out. If I have more room, I'll pull the car out so I can get a better angle to take pictures. I'm gonna do this one right here in this parking spot, so. They got an outline of an actual truck, which is kind of cool. They want you to angle your phone the same way the outline is. Starting from the front, it says front driver's side, including the wheel. So, get your phone kind of angled the same way the picture is. Take your picture. Then it says front windshield, if it has any writing on the windshield, sometimes they have like the year, the VIN number on the windshield, this one doesn't. Alright, get this angle, rear passenger angle. corner more like that I didn't want to see a picture of the keys so I got the keys somewhere around here I can make the keys on the seat take a picture and that's that but usually I take extra pictures because uh, I want to cover my butt. 
make sure there isn't any damage that uh, the other pictures didn't pick up. Look, I'm gonna mark this rust hole right here. You know, that's pretty obvious. Whoever brought this truck should know it got a big rust spot on the quarter panel. Take one on the rear. Get that rust spot. I look for any major dents or dings or scuffs, scrapes. I'm gonna show y'all how you mark it inside the uh, app for damage. Looks pretty good. So now you just go back to your pictures you took. And the options will pop up. Hopefully you can see this. They say multiple scrapes, multiple scratches, broken, chipped, scuffed. You give you different options. I'm gonna press on multiple scratches. And you can just tap it. I just tap all around the whole truck multiple scratches can you see that it's kind of a glare issue but multiple scratches all the way around just to cover my butt even if it ain't no scratches I'm still putting multiple scratch there now I'm doing rust spots I got an option for rust Rust, I put rust on the other side. I put a rust. That's pretty much it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get this truck backed out of here so I can get it loaded up to my truck and then probably turn y'all back on when I come to my first. Uh, I plan on taking me a little short rest at a break area, rest area somewhere. So, I'll talk to y'all then. Oh, you know what? I forgot one step. Odometer, ask for your odometer reading too. So I gotta put the key in for this, but odometer goes right there. You got a few other options. Is it drivable? You just put yes. Do you have a title? No. How many keys do you have? I'm gonna put, I think it was two keys. I'm gonna hurry up so I can get out of here. I don't wanna be here too long. I ain't gotta be. Yeah, so we got. Three keys and two remotes. So I put three keys, two remotes. All right, and just kind of the rest of it, I don't really worry about. I ask about a spare tire, and you got the manuals and headphones and stuff like that in here. I just hit save and move forward. After you put your odometer reading in there, you go inside and get somebody's signature. And guess what? It's another stick shift. <laughs> I didn't read my memos close enough. I'm getting my stick shift lesson today, boy. All right, let me back out of this tight spot and get this truck loaded up. See if I can drive this and record. A raggedy pickup truck. See, I can't drive a stick shift. <laughs> it's just getting up on these trailers. Oh my God, they put me to work today. So y'all ain't gonna catch this part of me loading this one up. I'm gonna go ahead and hurry up and get back on the get back on the road. So let me go ahead and get to it. All right, so taking me a short break. I've been driving for probably about uh 60 or 70 miles. I'm about halfway to my first drop. So I'm just gonna do a quick inspection of my truck while well, I give it some time to rest. And I'm gonna check all my straps, make sure all my straps are still secured on each vehicle. And now I got a little time, I might go over the load board with y'all because I had a, a guy leave me a comment on one of my other videos. Make sure y'all go back and check out my other videos. Again, I'm showing the whole process of me getting started with this curl hauling. So you get to see me when I got my trailer then I brought my truck put the work in on my truck and just the whole process so check out them other videos um, I believe 
the DOT law says you're supposed to check all your straps every, what is it, your first, within your first 100 miles or first 50 miles, one of them. So I'm being compliant by doing this. Everything looks good. My truck has airbags on there. Probably could have aired them up a little bit more before down the road this morning, but it's riding pretty good. It ain't squatting too bad. With three cars loaded, I think that's probably uh, the heaviest is the one on the back. That's like 5,500 pounds. The rest of them are under 5,000 pounds. I want to say around 4,000 pounds. So everything looks good. If I'm able to show y'all this load board, we're gonna try to do that so I can check and see what's available. I haven't seen anything so far, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised because it's Monday. Usually Mondays they have a bunch of stuff going somewhere. So I'm using Super Dispatch. I got me a load alert for Michigan and Michigan loads. It's only showing 15 available. So, hope y'all can see that. Um, I'm currently signed up and working with backlot cars, if you can see that. All three of these cars I'm loaded up with right now are backlot cars, halls. So, they got one going to uh, Mount Morris, it's 119 miles. So let me show y'all this one. I may not book this, but I'm gonna show you. So they wanna pay 150 to go 119 miles. Okay. That's a better view. It's a 2010 Ford Escape. Um, now they got your pickup dates and delivery dates. You can kind of pick up. See, I want to schedule this for tomorrow. Everything in blue is what they're going to allow you to choose for a pickup date. So I want to book it for Tuesday. I could and take it the same day or I can go back and uh, make my delivery date. See, the same options five days out. I can say I'd, I'll drop it off on Wednesday if I wanted to. And if they accept that, It'll be booked. But I want to show y'all one other thing. See, see right there where it says see pricing insight. So let's say you don't think 150 is enough. You can click on pricing insight. And basically it'll show you other carriers that's run these same type of loads, that same distance. And it'll show you what they was paid. See, it said pricing recommendation. See, they got paid 120 to run that, that route, 118 miles. This person made 257, but that was 230 miles. 213 was 226. So a lot of these are more miles actually, but uh, 134 miles. So it's looking like 150 is a fair rate. But if you ever wanted to just check and see what other guys have been paid, you can do that and then go back and request more money to run that load. So that's one cool feature. So uh, I don't know. I'm not going to really deal with that right now. I might just wait and see where those pops up. 220. 172 miles for that route. 119 for 149 miles. By my truck being an older truck, I'm trying to kind of I'm testing out how it handles and how it rides. So I kind of I kind of been trying to stand there a certain distance. So I really don't want to run no farther than 150 miles one way. But I know it's gonna come a time where I got to uh, sleep overnight somewhere. Like for example, I'm going to Grand Rapids right now. I don't see any loads going back to the Detroit metro area. So 
Let's say I might want to find a load in Chicago. Go back up here. Pick up cities. Put it in Michigan. And I will put it in Illinois. IL. Um, I do an advanced search because I want to make sure that they require an open, tra a open trailer. I don't have an enclosed trailer. Condition, I'm doing operable, not in ops. They gotta be running. I can't haul anything that don't run I don't have a wrench on my trailer. So we do a search. Seven found. And again, let me see, let me switch this. I screwed that up. What I wanna do is Illinois first for pickup and Michigan for drop. All right, so it found two. And I don't think I'm signed up with RCG Logistics, so I couldn't do any one of those loads no way if I wanted to. So that's my point. I might be dead heading back to, to, to back, back to my home. I guess you could say back to Detroit. So we try, but that's how I'm working my load board. I'm signing up with Central Dispatch this week. I really haven't had the time. They kind of had me waiting five days. And somebody finally just called me this morning. So I'm going to try to get set up with Central and see if I can sign up with some other shippers and then kind of book my loads through Central Dispatch. So, all right, we got seven minutes. That's been a long time talking. I'm going to tap back in with y'all and I'll get back to my destination. This place is a nightmare to get to. It's been all back roads for about an hour and a half, up and down hills. I'm stressing my truck so bad. Jeez. But we almost there, I got three miles to go. It's been a rough ride. So I'm at my first stop in the middle of nowhere. I'm ready to get this thing off the back of my trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this done so I can get to my next two stops and kind of run it behind on time. But man, it was, this was something special getting here. Something special. But we made it. Okay. I'm at the second drop, Unique Auto Sales. In Cedar Springs, Michigan, or something like that, I believe. Let me get this last stick ship off the back of my trailer and get on to my last stop. So as usual, I'm kind of rushing, so you may not catch all this. They gotta shift that other truck backwards. I don't wanna drive. I don't know how far my next stop is. I don't wanna drive with it that far up. Might have my trailer rag goofy. So let me go ahead and get this unloaded. Turn this down. So. This was about, I drove 327 miles so far. I got another 140 miles to go. Uh, what is that? Almost 475 miles, round trip, something like that. 250 a car, three cars. And I'm gonna need gas shortly. It cost me about 120 to fill my tank up, so do the math. Riding back home, I'm gonna end up riding back home uh, empty. So, still I can't complain. Next time I do this route, I might ask for a little more money, but still, easy, just driving, man, no complaints. All right, I'm at my last stop. 
in Greensville, Michigan, right outside of Grand Rapids somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I mean, when I say the middle of nowhere, I will not be taking these loads no more when I see them on the load. <laughs> it was all back roads. It took an hour to go 30 miles up and down hills. I mean, I put my truck to the test. I still got to go back at least two and a half hours to get back home. Oh, I see a lake down that way. I see the water. I'm gonna go sit by the water for a little while, take me a short break. <laughs> well, let me go ahead and get this car unloaded because I think they already closed, but they should have a drop box for the key. But that's three down. Mission accomplished. Thank you, God. Successful trip. Uh, I'm going to check the load board. I haven't seen anything going back. Not yet. I'm going to check one more time. Hopefully, I can find something. I thought I checked my drive time. But we shall see. I'm trying to hit my target, but ain't no guarantee I'm going to get that 1,000 today. But three cars at 250 a car. I'm going to need fuel. I got a pretty small fuel tank. I think it's like a 30 gallon. Something like that. So it only takes me about 120 to fill my tank up. And diesel is around 450 a gallon. So that ain't bad, but it just don't last long. Anyway, let me go ahead and get this car loaded. That's how you know you're in the middle of nowhere. It's all eyes on me. I pull it up and it's just like they ain't never seen nobody like me before. <laughs> if you catch my drift. Anyway. Go ahead and back this car off. get out and check my reps when I'm coming down. Make sure I'm lined up good. All right, let me go and get this finished up. All right, well, I got three delivered. I checked the load board. Of course, I didn't see anything going back to Detroit. But uh, it's cool, I don't complain. I got me two booked for tomorrow. So, uh, it's to be continued. I'll just take my wins how it is. So, until next time, I got my celebration cigar right here for Mission Accomplished. And that's the process. So, make sure y'all like this video for me. Subscribe to my channel. Share this. You know, all that YouTube stuff y'all already know. Almost got my own line. Profit transport logistics, baby. I'm gonna do my last, my last walk around safety check. I made my drive home. I got about two hours. All right, let's get to it, baby. Yes, sir. Home sweet home. That boy put that work in. What we do? Let me show y'all this. 475 miles driven today. And my 6.0 power stroke. You hear me? And she still sound hungry. Want some more miles. Anyway, it's the process, my baby. Y'all subscribe to my channel and stay tuned in with me. Let's get to it.